Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to add a video to my um, baby section on my channel to kind of give you guys an update of what's going on. Um, but specifically, this video is going to be about my birth experience. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I'm going to kind of just generalize it um, to keep everything classy here. But um, if you guys have any specific questions or certain videos that you want to see um, or just want information more in depth, let me know. Um, and I can create different videos. But obviously, this is my first baby. So I had a lot of worries, questions, fears, everything. Um, you don't know at all what to expect. So you start Googling everything, which can be really scary. Um, I was freaked out. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily freaked out about like the pain portion. Um, I was more just freaked out about everything that comes along with birth. Like, you know, will I tear and will the baby, you know, come naturally or will I have to get a C-section and will the baby be okay? I mean, there's so many like other factors that you can't control that pain wasn't necessarily a fear of mine because that was something that I knew, okay, no matter what, it's going to end. Like that's something that I felt like I could get through and manage. Um, but all of the other things that are just completely out of your control are what freaked me out. And that is what, you know, sparked all of the research that I did. Um, so I'm hoping this video helps people with their questions um, and with their fears and things like that. So going into it, I had in my mind, you know, the perfect scenario that could happen. Um, I was like, oh my God, I hope, you know, my husband's home. Um, he works 24 hour shifts. So he's 24 on, 48 off. So I was so scared that he was gonna be at work when I went into labor and like he wouldn't make the birth or nobody would drive me to the hospital. I mean, I just was totally freaked out. Um, so best case scenario, I was hoping he was home. I was hoping that my water would break and that you know I would have a very quick labor and delivery and make it to the hospital fine and everything would go you know, just smoothly. Um, that's not really what happened. I didn't have like a terrible delivery experience, but it just didn't go how I expected, which I don't really know if many people's experiences do. Um, nature just kind of takes its course. So you got to roll with it. Um, so what happened with me is I had been experiencing contractions for like two days. Um, but I just thought they were Braxton Hicks because they were so inconsistent. Um, they were also like inconsistent with the pain level, the time, um, the length that they would last. I mean, just everything about them was so shoddy. The only thing consistent was that they hadn't ever completely gone away. Um, so for two days, it was just contractions. Um, that being said, by day two, I was like, okay, this seems really weird. Like Braxton Hicks aren't supposed to last this long. Like I know that you have like little bursts of them. Um, but I just kept on like not wanting to be that person that would call my doctor or, you know, go to the hospital prematurely and then just get sent home and, you know, get all excited. And then I just didn't want to be, you know, that person. I was more like worried about being embarrassed than I guess the safety of me. And that should not have been the case because if you're having those contractions for two days, like you should call. And that's what I did. So I called my OB and just kind of like talked to a nurse, like a nurse's line. And I was like, here's what's going on. Um, she spoke to my OB and they wanted to see me immediately because um, by day two of the contractions, I had started to notice that the baby was moving like a lot less than what they normally were. Um, I would say my entire pregnancy, my baby was very active. Um, specifically it would be during certain times that the baby would be more active than others and it just wasn't that way like activity had completely slowed down um, which was concerning to me which is what ended up making me call so she said um, let's see you in here so I immediately went to the OB um, they like strapped me up to this you know I guess like a stress test basically 
Um, it monitors, you know, the baby's movements, the heart rate. Um, and it also monitors like if you're having contractions. Um, so I was hooked up to that machine for like maybe like 30 minutes and I had called Cody to meet me there because he was at work. So that worst case scenario did happen. Um, but he got there really quickly. Thank God. So, um, he had gotten there and we went into the room together and you know, I was hooked up to the stress test and the nurse came back in, read the paper and she was like, yeah, you're definitely having some contractions. You're having some pretty decent contractions. Um, she was like, honestly, I think we just need to send you to the hospital um, to have this baby because the lack of movement is concerning to us and there's just no point in you waiting anymore. I was 39 weeks. Um, so, you know, it was not going to be like detrimental to have the baby at that point um so I was like oh my god like freaking out I just didn't expect it I kind of just thought like I would go in there and they'd be like you're fine like come to us when it's something serious and that wasn't the case so I was kind of like whoa like we're not going back home like we're going to the hospital, like, this is the last day of us not having a baby, like, everything just became so real, my heart sank to my butt, I was like, oh my god, um, she was like, well, I think you'll be okay if you do another night, she was like, so let's just set you up first thing in the morning to go to the hospital, we'll set you up with the Pitocin, and then, you know, everything should be fine from there, and I was like, okay, so that made me feel a little bit less panicked and freaked out. I could go home and just mentally prepare myself for what was about to happen. We leave the um, hospital. We're in the parking lot walking to our car and my phone's ringing and it's my doctor's phone number. And I was like, that's weird. So I answer and she was like, Courtney, we changed our mind. Like we want you to go to the hospital. And I was like, okay, is everything okay? Like did something change? And she was like, we just think it'd be better just you know, for the safety of everybody, just go to the hospital. She's like, you know, we don't have to start your Pitocin tonight if you don't want to, but at least just to monitor you, we want you to be in the hospital in case. And I was like, okay. Then we came home, we got our bags, packed everything up. Um, my foster daughter went where she needed to go, you know, as part of our birth plan. Um, and then we were off to the hospital. We got there at like 6 p.m. Um, now, we go to the hospital and they, they do, they start the Pitocin on me. So, I mean, my contractions immediately started picking up and getting a lot stronger. Um, my contractions were about maybe three minutes apart. Um, and I had asked for the epidural. So, I got the epidural whoa, like that hurt. That hurt really freaking bad. I mean, don't get me wrong. I didn't think it was going to feel good, but ouch. Like I've had so many shots. I've gotten a half a sleeve tattoo. Like I've gotten piercings. I've never felt that hurt really bad. Um, if I ever have another baby, I would get another epidural because I feel like it probably did help, but ugh, yikes, at least like I kind of know that now I know what the pain feels like. That hurts so bad. Um, anyway, so I got the epidural and I don't know if it really even kicked in because literally I got done with the epidural. I laid back in bed and immediately my water broke. Like, within, I had two more contractions between when they were done with the epidural and when I had gotten back in bed and my water broke. At that point, they were like a minute apart. It, it, it progressed so quickly. Um, my water breaking was super scary because I had just had the epidural. I was freaked out about getting the epidural and I thought like, I hope I'm not paralyzed. I hope that this is in where it's supposed to be. I don't want to die. I mean, I was so scared. And then my water broke and I was like, oh no, I'm not okay. Something is wrong. Doctor, nurse, like what happened? And she was like, your water just broke. And I was like, is that normal? Is this okay? And she was like, 
yeah, it's normal. I was like, am I dying? She's like, no, your water just broke. But it feels weird and you hear it. Like when your water breaks, like you hear like a little popping noise. And I was like, what the heck is that? Like my body never has made that noise before. What just popped? Like that's not okay. Um, and it's just like a warm gush of fluid. And I'm just like, I immediately thought it was blood. And so I got really scared thinking like that epidural just did something terrible to me. Um, turns out it was just my water breaking, but oh well. Um, so literally I had two more contractions after my water broke and I was pushing. Um, and I pushed, I think maybe like three or four times and the baby was here. Um, I honestly do not know how women push for hours because I was exhausted. Like just after, I mean, maybe it was like, maybe it was like 30 minutes of pushing all together. I don't even think it was that long. Honestly, it's hard to tell because when you're in that much pain, I feel like you're, you're so focused that time doesn't necessarily feel the same. Um, I'm going to say 30 minutes, but if it was less than that, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, especially because my contractions were only a minute or so apart. You know what I mean? And I only pushed like four separate times. So I really, I bet you I probably had the baby within like under 10 minutes, but my time could be totally skewed. Um, so anyways, all together, my whole labor and delivery experience was only four hours from the time I got to the hospital to the time I had our baby. Um, and I'm so thankful for that because I hate hospitals. I hate going to the doctors. Like, I, I don't know. It's just a fear of mine. So having that experience be very short, that made me feel good. Um, and then just having them, like, put the baby on your chest, I just... I remember just saying like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I couldn't say anything else, but just, oh my God. It's like words just, I couldn't believe it. It was so overwhelming and you just don't have words for it. So you just kind of like keep repeating the same thing. And I just was like holding the baby and I, I, I couldn't believe that in that instant, the baby came from being inside of me to you're here now and I am like, totally responsible for you. I was scared. I was happy. There was so many emotions all in one that I just kind of sat there and was like, oh my God, like everything just flooded into my mind. Um, and immediately I just felt like, can I do this? I mean, there's no turning back. You know, you can't put her back in and you can't, you can't put the baby back in and get re-ready or prepare yourself anymore. I mean, it is what it is. You, you have to just, you're a mom now and your journey begins. Um, so that being said, that is my birth experience. Um, I did tear, um, and I did have quite a bit of stitches internally. So that was really uncomfortable. Um, I mean, just the birth experience alone is very painful the um, healing process that you go through is so long. I feel like, I mean, it's just draining. You're sore. You just, you can't really do anything the same anymore. I feel like, um, at least not for a little while, like everything that you do just is like, ow, that hurts. Um, coughing, mm -hmm, sneezing, laughing. I'm just like, ha. Huh. So, I'm going to do a separate video um, like on my postpartum experience because that is something that I wish I did way more research on. So if anybody's watching this video and you are pregnant, you're expecting, um, do a lot of research on postpartum because I was so excited to have my baby come that I was just like watching the videos of like, you know, pregnancy week 12 and 16 and here's what to expect and here's what your baby's doing. And I was like, oh, yay. Never thinking about like, oh, after the baby comes, your body is about to be screwed up. Like you're about to be in so much pain. Um, so I wish I would have done more to research it, prepare, um, even getting things like, you know, the, the pads or the ice packs, the heating pads, like, you know, just anything, even snacks, like high energy snacks, because I was planning on breastfeeding, like 
there's so many things that I wish I could have prepared for better and differently because I was so focused on the baby um, that I totally forgot about myself. I totally forgot about what I was going to need or the state that I would be in after having a baby. Um, so I'm going to do a separate video on postpartum and I hope that any women expecting watch it because maybe it'll be helpful to you um, to prepare better. So yeah, be sure to uh, look out for that video. It'll be to come soon. And be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Um, I would love to have you all stay at my channel. There's many different videos for everybody, different topics that I try to do. Um, just have a wide range so that people can visit the channel more often. Um, if you guys want to see anything specific, let me know. If you have questions, just comment down below. Thank you. Bye.